Hello from Dream Vacations. We look forward to helping you plan a cruise vacation where you can race your friends on the top deck while cruising the oceans. Or you can compete with your friends in style with virtual reality racing on board. If cruising is not for you, we can send you to Germany where you can challenge the ring or whisk you off to Abu Dhabi to take on the world's fastest roller coaster in Ferrari world. Whatever your dream vacation may be, let Dream Vacations handle the details and make that dream into reality. Visit us at www.travelwithanangel.com. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Frost versus Senna, PK versus Mansell, Hamilton versus Rosberg. There have been many great rivalries within the same team in racing history, and while last season saw one develop between Overbay and Padovani, it never seemed to get heated. The friendly demeanor between the two BO racing drivers kept the battle civil, but no less intense. 
the two have clearly become the favorites when it comes to fighting for wins and championships. But will others attempt to join the fray? We'll find out soon as we get ready to watch the opening round of the PRL Radical Racing Series, and you'll see it all live here on the Global Sim Racing Channel and the iRacing Esports Network. Hi, I'm Joe Peek, and with me in the booth is Nick Schmeg. Behind the scenes is our director, Sean Crackers Ambrose, and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Nick, Watkins Glen wasn't on last season's schedule, so in case uh, we have viewers who are new to the circuit, why don't you fill us in? Yeah, Joe, I've always held a special place in my heart here at for Watkins Glen International, with it being one of my home tracks. The first thing you're gonna have you're gonna notice tonight with these radicals is the pure speed that's gonna be unleashed here. Some still call this track Thunder Road because when you're down off the hill and in the village of Watkins Glen, if it's race day, it sounds like a thunderstorm up through the valley. And history runs deep in the village as this used to be a street circuit that ran down the hill and through that village around Seneca Lake. After multiple safety precautions were taken, a track was permanently built and odds are if it's a racing series, they've probably been here. Formula One, NASCAR, IndyCar, IMSA, and the original World Sports Car Championship, to name a few. 12 challenging turns here over a road course that spans 3.4 miles, or roughly 5.5 kilometers, is what the drivers are up against tonight. The high speeds and reliance on momentum here make passing tough, with each corner presenting its own unique challenges. To get a better look at those challenges, let's send you down to the track with the GSRC Lap Guide. All right, we've got Stefan Schlocker in the GSRC Radical, so let's do a lap around Watkins Glen. Down into the 90, there's a big drop in elevation, so it's not uncommon for drivers to outbreak themselves. And while you can use this paved runoff, you always risk bouncing over the curbs wrong. Up the hill through the S's, it's easily flat out, so you'll mostly be minimizing your steering inputs and trying to make it the straightest line possible. But what this does do is emphasize the importance of your exit off the first corner. Fail to get the power down soon enough, and you'll be lacking speed all the way until the end of the backstretch. That's why it's most common to see pass attempts at the end of it into the inner loop. Just be wary if you try to enter this chicane too wide though, because if drivers aren't careful, they can tangle with each other and cause all kinds of mess. The carousel should only need a small brush on the brakes, but otherwise all you're doing is lifting and trying to carry your momentum through here. After that, we diverge off the main course into the boot and you've got another downhill braking zone at the chute. Overcorrect a slide in this corner and expect to find the car suddenly stopped in the tires. On occasion, you might see drivers try to set up a pass into the toe of the boot. I'd say the far more important aspect of this hairpin is the exit. It's steeply uphill and it's actually a fairly long run down to the next braking zone. Because of all this, the heel of the boot also sees a fair bit of action. I'm mostly wary of the inside curb on this right-hander with the weight it'll upset just about any car that clips it. Quickly, you've got to switch sides and set up for turn 9. This is easily the most difficult turn on the lap because of the crest and its off-camber nature. Now we're back on the main circuit, where the penultimate turn needs another big lift and possibly another brush on the brakes. Then, the racing line jumps off to the left and you're faced with the final corner. There's a fair bit of banking, but it's got the wall right at the edge of the track. Overshooting your exit can leave you with damage when you flirt with the tire barrier. But hopefully, if you've kept it all together, you've now finished a lap around Watkins Glen. Laps are going to be ticked off pretty fast for how long this circuit is. These uh, radical cars get very, very fast, as Nick mentioned in the uh, track description. So before we get to the racing, we do want to mention the PRL Radical Racing Series is brought to you by Dream Vacations. Dream Vacations provides completely customi uh, customizable vacation packages from your door to your destination and back. Go to travelwithanangel.com and let us worry about the details. Big thanks to them for sponsoring this season of the Radical Series. Let's take a look at the championship from last season, though, and how the points wound up. We mentioned the battle between the BO Racing teammates, and up at the top, you can see Overbay managed to finish ahead of Padovani, but it was close up until that last round. Padovani with trouble. And the final race at Brands Hatch made it uh, look a lot less close than it uh, really was up to the end. Mark File manages to get himself into third, and then Eric Luke and Eric Harmon, the two Eric's, round out your top five in the points. Nick, uh, what did the team's championship wind up looking like? Well, like you mentioned, uh, BO Racing with Overbay and Padovani, they had some great seasons last year. They ended up winning the championship, finishing first there at the top of the board. Fraley's auto body behind them, the cash for crash guys. 
behind them a long ways down, 100 points from second to third right there. With Blown Tranny Racing, with the Canadian drivers finishing 20 points further back in fourth. And Black Flag Racing, hopefully we don't see any Black Flags tonight, they ended up finishing in fifth. Today's race, however, as we take a look at the race details, as we mentioned, we have reset everything. It is round one for the new season. Now, they have restricted the fuel cells on these SR8s compared to what the real ones can run. So this 45 minute race will have one pit stop that they must make for fuel. Uh, the setups on the car are open. That's going to be very important. Uh, the, the cars in official racing and iRacing are fixed. So any drivers who have been running over there will have to get used to whatever they set it up over here. Unless, well, they could use that fixed setup, I suppose. Uh, you might not find the speed in that. They have an incident cap at 24. Go over that and you will be disqualified. They also have no out there today if you get any damage and that could be costly a couple cars there on screen getting some damage here in the qualifying unfortunately now we are once again watching this entire season on the iRacing eSports Network if you'd like to subscribe to IESN all you got to do is click the big red button that says so on their YouTube page not only will you have the PRL Radical and GTE series show up there in your YouTube feed, but also all of the official World Championship series here on iRacing, brought to you on IESN. Taking a look at the qualifying and how things are going thus far, Eric Lukes found himself a nice bit of speed. He's got nearly two tenths over Christian Gritzko. The warm-up looked very different. Uh, Nick, we saw our two rivals for the championship, Overbay and Padovani, a lot higher up than what we're seeing them now. Yeah, they are back, Overbay back in sixth right now. Padovani all the way down in 20th right now. I would expect that to change later on, but those two drivers right now actually working together on track as well. And what's curious is well, last season, Padovani admitted that he tended to like to start from the back and work his way through and just have some fun. And it was later in the season he realized, well, I'm up for a championship. So you would think this would be normal, but as you mentioned, it, he's he's running with his teammates, so it seems like he's trying to get a good lap time. Whoa, as he has a big wobble, a couple big wobbles, working his way through the toe of the boot. And that's going to lose him contact with Michael as the 68 starts to streak away. Hey, so Glitter Pants, as he's uh, come to be nicknamed here in this series, has got to work in these last five minutes to move himself up the order. Yeah, definitely. That was a big bobble he had there. So, and he got, got up in the curbing there. That's one of the trickiest turns on this track, I think. Turn number 10, getting back up uh, onto the NASCAR circuit here from the boot. Uh, definitely hard to wind your car up through there as Padovani down to 22nd now as we have some faster times coming in. Let's see what they put up here. 41.6 for Overbay. And that is not going to be enough to improve. But Padovani moves to 14th with that last lap. A 43.5 for him. Still very much in the mid-pack and not up at the front where we would expect. A driver who is up front, who I believe is a bit new to the series, the number 19 of David Unger, one of our two uh, Australia slash New Zealand club drivers here today competing. He is currently sitting third, but he topped the times in the warm up. So I think he's going to be one to watch. And meanwhile, Gritsko takes the pole. He does indeed. Not by much at all. That's about three one hundredths of a second separating Gritsko and Erica Luke now. But the 28 car, Christian Gritsko, the Canadian, he just barely slipped up there. He's another one working with his teammate right now on track. Unger is getting close to the end of the lap. Oh, and it looks... Oh, we thought maybe he was on a bit of a slow lap. Looks like this is a flyer, so number 19 comes around the penultimate corner. Now the final turn, carrying his speed around this banked corner all the way up to the tires. It's still clean, though. Let's see if this is going to be good enough as he crosses the line. A 141.2, and that does not improve his position, even though it improves his time out on track. Yeah, that's a big gap to have to improve on the two top drivers right now, Gritsko and Luke. They're at a 141 flat. Unger with a 141.2, like you said there, and then it's another three-tenths back to fourth as Michael Overbay 
has moved Ooh. up to fourth, and Jefferson Padovani to the top of the charts. That's what we're used to seeing here in the Radical series. Uh, PRL, oh, and, and Gritsko, or excuse me, no, I thought Gritsko had improved there. He has not finished a lap. Uh, this does bump Unger down to fifth because of Overbay now being shuffled to fourth. Luke is now in third due to that, and Luke, I must say, is probably going to be a very hungry driver. He came so close to wins multiple times last season, but didn't snag a single one. He's going to be starting on the second row if things stay as they are here in qualifying, and I expect him to also be in the hunt for the win today. Oh, absolutely. I'm also curious to see if Michael Overbay moves up to that front row at all. Uh, if he's able to knock them off, or we're going to have the BO drivers a little bit separated to start the race from first and fourth as they run right now. Let's see Eric Luke going a little bit wide on the first corner, but we've gone over to Curl and Andrew, one of the few drivers to take a win in this series last season. Only had four different drivers. He currently sits in eighth. Uh, four different drivers who won, excuse me. Uh, Curl and Andrews. Uh, obviously, Overbay and Padovani. And then the last one, just checking my stats here, I believe, was Paul Wildridge. That's right. So, out of eight rounds, four winners. Not too bad, really. But still, uh, I'm sure they would have liked to see more. David Unger still down in fifth. His last lap was not an improvement. Yeah, he's stuck in fifth right now, not working with any other drivers. I'm not so sure the draft would give you a whole lot of help, but apparently, uh, as we've saw the BO drivers take up the first and fourth, it gives them a couple of tenths extra, at least on the straightaways here. Hmm. The Australian invasion is turning up some very fast drivers. Rem Ambrosi also in six, right behind his fellow Aussie New Zealand club driver. I shouldn't say Australian invasion, just in case one of them is New Zealand. <laughs> Uh, but the number 63 finds himself on the third row. Not a bad showing for his first race in this series. This is a timed lap for Andrew Spicer, who has yet to put a time in. And he is going to be able to get one more if this one does not count. Let's see what he can put on the board. That was actually a slow one, it looks like. A 217.5. So that will not improve, and that spin means that he's actually going to start from the back. So Andrew Spicer in for a bit of a long day. Under crossing the line. Now he will be able to go around one more time after this one if he chooses to, and he bumps himself up to fourth ahead of Overbay. Checkered flag comes out in qualifying. Eric Luke going to be one of the first fast cars to cross, but I think he is slow. Yes, indeed, that was not a good lap for him, so he will not improve. This is Curlin Andrew now. His last lap also not an improvement. He stays where he is. Okay, Nick Padovani, he's on the pole. Can he extend the gap? That's the question. No, he can't, actually. Yeah, he got up on that curbing there. I think he was already headed to the pits anyway, though. Taking a look at the number 78. That is uh, Ronald McManus. Currently sits in 21st. Oh, he's a little wide off the corner. Keeps it off the wall as he screams to the line. The last lap was his fastest, a 45.5. This one is a 45.7, so he stays put in 21st. Like our next one, Nick, going to be David A. Bear. Let's see if he can move up. He's currently sitting 20th right now. I'm sure he'd like to move up through the field just a bit. Yep, his fastest, a 145.2 off the final corner. The red and yellow machine crosses the line, a 44.8. And that will, uh, doesn't actually improve his position, unfortunately, even though he bumped his time better. Unger's last lap was his fastest, and that puts him on the front row. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Great that puts, stuff from the number 19. That puts Gritsko back to third. 
by five one thousandths of a second, too. We are in for a stunner. That's the last of our qualifiers, so let's go through our starting order. Padavati, he almost came away with a championship. He's going to come away with the pole today. He'll be flanked by newcomer David Unger. Christian Gritzko will be starting in third with Eric Luke starting fourth. Last season's champion, Michael Overbay. Not the best qualifying from him, but we've seen him come from farther back. He'll be P5. Rem Ambrosi starts in sixth. Mark File will be seventh. And then Curlin Andrew, our winner for the opening round last season, will be P8. Owen McLaughlin will start ninth. And Brad Yeager rounds out your top 10. Row number six is going to be Matthew Miles on the inside with Eric Harmon to the outside. John LaBaff, he wants to keep that momentum going from the PRL NASCAR Truck Series last night at Martinsville into tonight's race here at the Glen in the Radicals. He starts 13th alongside Christopher Richards. Matthew Gunderson is going to be in 15th right behind them, followed by Danny Duchesne, Tyler Gore, Daniel Barnett, Phil Guillaume, and David Hebert in the 20th position. Ronald Manis will be P21, Julian Huxley 22nd, Brian Matthews starts 23rd with William Lee in 24th. Uh, Bartosz Roskowicz uh, will probably be a DNS. I do not see him in the server at the moment. Mark Nadeau in 27th and Andrew Spicer in 20, or yes, 27th and 25th respectively. My time in scoring a little bit screwed up here. Both of those drivers did not set a time in qualifying. Drivers work their way to the grid as the clock ticks down. The lights come up. Engines start to rev. Green flag is out here for season two in 2019. Jefferson Padovani does not get the greatest of starts. Unger gets a little bit of a run, but he's going to be on the outside into the 90. He breaks very late. He uses the runoff, but that is not going to help because a better run for Gritzko gets him to the inside by the S's. And uh, I think it's clean through the rest of the field. Yeah, David Unger, he had a great uh, opportunity there as well because of Padovani's poor start. But now Gritzko is going to go side by side for the lead heading into the bus stop. From third to first, potentially, if he can outbreak the likes of Padovani into the inner loop, he does. Padovani now losing another position because here comes David Unger. Unger can't get the pass done. They manage to get through their side by side, but lose heaps of time to the new leader, Gritzko. It is a fracas behind them with all the cars fighting for a second. Look at how many are lined up behind them now. Absolutely. A couple of guys shifting through positions up front, especially Overbay moved up to fourth. Eric Luke is back to fifth. That was a pass that also happened going in through there. A little wide for Mark File trying to hold it, coming off of the toe of the boot. He finds the pedal, and Rim Ambrosi has, still has a nose to the inside as they come up to the heel of the boot. Not sure if this is going to be a pass done. He's given space, just can't quite stick it in there. Ambrosi got up on the curbing a little bit. Now everyone goes up through this uh, turn number 10 for the first time tonight. Looks like they're all clean through it. Absolutely, and Padovani has rebounded. He's caught back up to Gritzko. Oh, and Gritzko spins into the final corner. He catches it amazingly, loses a couple positions, stops the bleeding at fifth place, but woo, a heart attack moment for the number 28. He got his left side wheels hooked on that strip of grass in between the track and the tire barrier heading into turn number 12 and that was just enough to set that car loose but like you said fantastic catch there for Christian Gritzko. A lot of swapping around we've had at the top of the field but it has now come down to two as they leave the rest of the crew behind. David Unger pops to the inside of Jefferson Padovani retakes the lead over Jefferson. Brazilian has to give way behind them. There is an almighty scrap going on for P5 between the likes of Gritzko and Luke. Excuse me, for fourth. Absolutely. Luke goes to the inside here just a little bit, tried to go defensive, but a big run for Christian Gritzko as they head in there. Great job for breaking, breaking wise for Eric Luke. He's going to go ahead just a little bit, but through the carousel. Gritzko sticks his nose down to the bottom. It looks like he's going to have the speed to make that pass. Luke looking vulnerable as we ride on board with Christian now. He gets to the inside. He's got half a car length up beside him. 
And this time he gets it done. Christian Gritzko now up to fourth. Frantic action at the start of this race. We haven't even gotten five minutes in. Let's go back to ninth. Some good battling back there as well. This is Matthew Miles leading Eric Harmon. Also closely trailed by John LaBaff, who sounds like had a good race in the trucks last night with you, Nick. He absolutely did. A little bit of uh, an accident late in the race, and he was back in seventh or eighth. Got through it, and he ended up being the winner last night in the first race of the season there. Ahead of him, though, Eric Harmon. He's making a look to the inside of Miles down into the 90. He gets that one done. Miles might get him back, though, up the hill. We've seen this draft be a lot more powerful than I expected, Nick. I, I really didn't think we'd see this much swapping. Speaking of which, here goes another one. And this time it is Pat Avani managing to get ahead of the likes of Unger. Behind them, a swap for position between Gritzko and Overbay. Christian now onto the podium even. And that's all after he could have easily thrown this race away into the last turn of the first lap. With a great save, Christian Gritzko has come back already, like you said, onto the podium. He still has great speed in that number 28 radical. He's got about a second and some to catch up to David Unger. Whoa, and another oh. spin! This time, though, he finds the wall. Not too hard a damage, but that one was a lot more costly. Yeah, definitely not able to keep it straight. Like you said, he a lot more costly. Got into the wall, taking the spin to the left there. Into the arm coat. Just too hard off the gas, it looked like. And the setup that he has with that radical uh, didn't like the, uh, the gas he gave him there going up the hill. Yeah, this brings him down to 13th. That's Duchesne in the bright yellow radical ahead of him that you see. Get a little bit of cloud cover from time to time. It's uh, quite a bit warmer than what I saw in warm-up. 90 degrees currently on the track. It was down to, I believe, 76, 75 for a little bit as Gritzko going to have to make his way through again, but he's denied by Duchesne. Gritzko stuck in the middle right now between Duchesne and Richards. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him peek out of line here on the backstretch, though. He's got the run. Hopefully he doesn't have too much damage Ooh. from that top end. Weaving back and forth. The 27 holding to the outside as now they break for the inner loop and Gritzko gets it done. He's already on the tail end of John LaBaff uh, in front of him as well as he goes through the, goes through the carousel. LaBaff in the 911, the next on his list, but no opportunity down into the chute for him. Let's jump back up to the front because fourth and fifth has got two teammates battling and it's not Padovani and Overbay. Instead, it's Luke and File. They are battling indeed. Eric Luke being able to hold down the position now after starting fourth. And File right behind him as they exit the boot and get back up onto the cup track here. That bright yellow car behind him is Curlin Andrew as well. Teammate of Duchesne, who we were watching earlier, very much applying pressure to Mark File. You have to say, coming to this final corner, he's much closer to File than File is to Luke now. Heading on board with the Texas driver. Andrew getting it rolled up into the 90. A little bit off the apex compared to Mark File, and that's going to give the triple seven. A much better run up the hill. Meanwhile, we've danced back and forth for much of the race. Pat Avani and Unger. Oh, but this uh, looks a little bit less of a dance this time. Absolutely. Pat Avani was on the outside there and almost got almost chopped off the nose of Unger. Not willing to hand that over as readily now that they've pulled the gap on the cars behind. Three seconds back to Overbay from Unger. I think that this is where the race starts for these two. Oh, absolutely. Unger's got a lot of speed in that number 19 car, though. As he gets hard on the gas after that, he's got to run. 
He's looking to the inside, but he's not going to make the move here. Just waits patiently behind the likes of Jefferson Padovani. We go on board with David Unger. Curious to know what time it is actually over in Australia. Get someone on that. I think we had a couple Australians in the GTE race as well. 11.30 in the morning. Must, uh, must work the evening shift. So down the front stretch, David continuing to make sure that Padovani is kept honest, not letting him run away by any means. They're coming through the S's, but we'll jump back to fifth. This is between Andrew and File, and actually, Nick, this looks like a really good run for Andrew. Oh, it's been a great half lap for the past uh, lap for Andrew. He's got a big run up through the S's. He looks to the inside, goes to the outside now. And they're going to be side by side down the back stretch, headed into the inner loop. I think Andrew has the run, though. He's able to clear him. We saw up ahead as well that Unger and Padovani had a little bit of a side by side, but Padovani stayed where he was. Meanwhile, what happened to. I looked away for a second. What happened to Andrew through, through the bus stop? Ooh, looks like he had a really bad wiggle and allowed the positions almost... Got, he did get off into the grass just a little bit, but went really wide. So that big run that he had up through the S's and on the backstretch wasn't quite able to control that speed. Wasn't quite able to harness the uh, the power that his car had through there. Still another phenomenal save that we just saw on screen. Texas driver back to six with Rimmel, uh, or excuse me, Rem Ambrosi still hard on his tail oh we had an accident uh with christopher richards this was in the heel of the boots who was just behind the likes of danny duchene oh, he looks like he is limping badly yeah, it's not a very visual accident. He just gets off to the right side and into the, uh, the, the, the barrier there, but a big right side damage, especially with that rear wing. Remember, they have no spare car waiting for them, so he's got to come in and get that damage repaired if he wants to finish this race. That was, uh, not sure who that was oh, spinning to stay out of him. Bill Gilman had to save it. Let's watch him on board. We come back to our leaders, David Unger, still behind Padovani. They hold the gap back to Luke at about three and a half seconds. That is close. Padovani's had Unger in his mirrors for just about this entire race, and he's basically taking up as much room as he can in the mirror. He's taking a peek to the inside a couple times, just not quite in striking range right now for the lead. So here's a question for you then. We're coming up to that pit window getting close to opening. Do, should Unger maybe duck in if he thinks he's faster, uh, try and hot lap and risk hitting traffic, or is he sitting good where he is now? Well, hey, Tuesday night at Sebring, we were wondering the same thing with uh, drivers trying to get around Modoff and everyone, I think it was top six or seven, all came in the exact same lap. No one after that was really able to pass anyone, so uh, if Unger watched that race, I think he might want to come in about a lap earlier. Uh, it's just so hard to predict, of course, uh, when Padovani is going to be coming in. Going down to ninth place, this is Miles and McLaughlin. A nice little fight of their own. They're not too far behind the likes of Harmon, but I think they're really not too worried about that car up ahead. A great run by Owen. McLaughlin now hounding the back of Miles, and don't forget the battle behind them that you're getting glances of. That's Labaf and Gritzko. Gritzko still trying to regain all that he had lost early on. Yeah, Gritzko actually making a move right now on Labaf. He's up to 12th, looking for 11th now. He's going to have that one. And now McLaughlin in front of him. He found 11th, and <laughs> it took him no time to get underneath the gearbox of McLaughlin. We make a dive into the chute. 
No, looks like not quite. He goes way wide, actually. Out breaks himself. Cuts it back in. Look at this battle up ahead now. McLaughlin. Oh, and he's going to oh. split the middle. Gritzko trying to get two for one. He's got to work the hard way around the outside of Matthew Miles. And he's trying to get the power down. I think he might be able to get it. He's got a little bit of momentum, Nick. This is going to be an impressive move if he can pull this off. Into the heel. I don't think he's got it. He's going to have to slip right back in the line behind Matthew Miles. But nonetheless, a fantastic run that uh, Gritzko had there through the boot. That was brave stuff from the number 28 car. I still give him credit, even though he didn't uh, get the position. That was impressive stuff. Up at the top, you just saw Unger. Whoa, and Unger's in the lead. Unger overtook Padovani. When did this happen? Trying to spot this. He set the fastest lap of the race. This was on the backstretch, actually. Just slingshotted him. Oh, yeah. Unger got a big run up through the S's. Went to the left. Took a peek to the right. And that's where he got him. Made it look easy. Zoom in. He's by. So that's the first lead change we've had in a while in a race that saw a lot of them early and then it calmed down. It did also slow them up slightly. Uh, Eric Luke has cut oh, it down to now. Christian point. Gritzko right now. Oh, again. He was just getting by Matt Miles at the exit of the inner loop. I was about to say how he had a big run on the backstretch, but that is how it ended up for him. And he gets collected by the likes of Miles. This is on board the Canadian's view, the number 28. Too much curb, maybe? The setup that that car has must be really on edge because we've seen him lose the handling now three times because it's either blistering fast or just crazy loose. Well, the car that is not blistering fast right now other than Gritzko is Matthew Miles. He finds himself under attack from LeBaff with that damage. Almost T-boned the likes of Gritzko. Still, he's not going to give up. He holds LeBaff back and retains ninth place. That bright blue car behind him is Owen McLaughlin, who actually had to cut all the way down through the grass of the, uh, of the carousel to avoid that accident. Let's stay with this fight. Yeah, as, as we ride on board with McLaughlin. But I want to update. We saw a flash of purple at the top of the screen. Unger set another fastest lap, and he was pulling away from Padovani. So I wonder if Jefferson is in trouble now that he's been overtaken. Meanwhile, look at this on screen. Miles trying to do everything he can to keep John LeBaff from getting by on McLaughlin. Considering the three wide, reconsiders. Lifts on the back stretch, staying behind them. Inside belongs to John LeBaff. And now the position belongs to John LeBaff. He is in ninth. He makes that pass work through the carousel to see what kind of run. We had an incident behind uh, them. Yeah, we did indeed. That was, was Gunderson. Gunderson and Duchesne. And Tyler mm. Gore is going to, to take advantage of both of their misfortunes. Let's take a look at the replay. Looks like Duchesne. I think Duchesne may have thought that he was clear going into the inner loop of Gunderson, but he had that car to the inside and uh, we'll ended need to up back. popping his nose off. We'll need to back it up as we're currently live uh, on board the Canadian. Oof, yeah. Just unfortunately, so easy to tangle in that inner loop. You can see Duchesne tipped all the way off course. Yeah, and like you said just a moment ago, the driver that was really benefiting from that was Tyler Gore, teammates with Matthew Gunderson. They were working together the whole race prior to this. Watching it one more time here. Oh, we've... It looks like we unfortunately backed up a little too far there. So let's come back live. Duchesne keeps it going, but is now all the way down in 15th. His teammate actually in the battle right now, Curlin Andrew, overtaking Rem Ambrosi, and he makes that one stick. That gives Curlin P5.
Kyle catches up to both of them because of that. Haven't had too many big climbers this race that I'm seeing, at least from the grid. Eric Harmon went from 12th to 8th and Labaf from 13th to 9th, but other than that, the top seven are pretty close to where they started. Yeah, absolutely. With the exception of Christian Gritsko, uh, six of the seven are going to be, uh, or six of the seven running right now in the top seven started in the top seven. Back to David Unger. Let's take a glance at his pace this time by. <laughs> and it's another fastest lap of 41.3. Now, Padovani is riding his coattails. I wonder how much of this is due to the draft. Yeah, Padovani, on a couple of portions of the track, that last couple of laps, looked like he really closed the gap a little bit, but apparently not with Unger with another fastest lap there. Padovani is reeling him in. I'm, I'm starting to think that, that Unger is the faster of the two. And, Jefferson is just just desperately clinging to that slipstream. It'll I'll be very curious to see if if he makes a mistake, what happens then? Oh yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Padovani pull that short pit strategy that you talked about Unger doing oh. before he made that pass. Oh. Sorry, sorry, our final driver on the podium, Eric Luke, has a spin that costs him that podium position, and this was all on his own in the carousel. Yeah, this was getting into the carousel. It got on the curbing at the exit of the inner loop there, it looks like. And like you said, all by himself down into that slightly, or down into that slight strip of grass there they have in between the wall and the carousel. I'm gonna watch it one more time. Ooh, and there is big damage to the left rear of that number 09 car as well. Yeah, he is losing position after position. We're gonna watch it here. Oh, oh, yeah. You could see the rear of the car just suddenly break before he was out of the inner loop. The Florida driver, unfortunately, already to seventh as the likes of File, uh, Ambrosi, and Andrew all get by. Mark File, his teammate, running right in front of him behind Ambrosi and uh, Curl and Andrew, like you said. Those three have been battling uh, for a little bit for what is now fourth. Yeah, they all shuffle up upwards one position each. We talked about the team championship and how BO Racing did so well. Uh, well, one of the BO drivers trying to do what he can. Oh, that was awful tight out of the inner loop. Padovani can't quite take the lead away. It's still going to be a nice points all, even if they finish where they are, because it is currently Padovani second and Overbay third. Yeah, was, we almost saw uh, come clean for Padovani there. Oh, and another problem for Eric uh, Luke. Was it in the same place? It was the exact same place. Looks like a. Uh, yeah, it was an identical replay almost of the exact same accident. Got up on the curbing out of the bus stop. He nearly follows his tire tracks to the same spot in the arm go. <laughs> that is, I, I, I don't know if I've ever seen something like that. Looks like he was tracing it. So back up to the drivers battling for the lead. They got lap traffic Ooh. that they're trying to work their way around. That was William Lee. That slowed up David Unger. Here comes Jefferson Padovani. He doesn't need asking twice. He ducks to the inside, down to the 90. Can he get it off the corner, though? He was a little more shallow on the entry. That can hurt you sometimes. And it looks like Unger's going to try and come back at him on the backstretch. Oh, he will for sure. The last two or three laps, we've, saw, we've seen Padovani get a big run here through the S's on the backstretch. There goes Unger to the left of Padovani, side by side once again. They're not going to be able to clear him, though, I don't think, until they get into the bus stop here. Good on the brakes for the likes of Jefferson. That's going to retain the lead for now. So a little lap traffic coming into play. I did not think that that would be an issue here at this track, but Jefferson is on the ball. And now he's on the top spot. 
Had a few scheduled pit stops, I believe. Mark File has come in. And Danny Duchesne. Couple of the mid-pack drivers, they want to see if they can jump a couple of positions by uh, pulling off a little bit of a short pit strategy. About halfway through the race, just over halfway. Duchesne in and out. Banana split car going to return in what looks to be 16th place. Wow, we cannot get away from these top two because despite Padovani managing to get by, he cannot shake the likes of the number 19 car. We ride on board with our leader looking back at the club, Australia, New Zealand driver. What hunger threatening. Look at him look to the inside down there. Absolutely. I don't know if he was ever going to make that pass. I think he just wanted to throw the intimidation factor. Maybe at Padovani as he's setting up now, gearing up for a run up through the S's once again and onto the backstretch. Let's see if he can get out in clean air here and clear him. Glitter pants forcing him to the outside. Unger's got a nose ahead, though. Despite being on the racing line, David much earlier on the brakes into the inner loop. Yeah, that's a couple times now. He's done a great job of that. Or Padovani, I should say, has done a great job of that. Tyler Gore is going to take his scheduled stop. The number 77 hits his stall. I believe, was Gore the one that got into it with Duchesne that we saw earlier? I think he was the one that got through it uh, cleanly. Ah. Well, Duchesne's coming around right now on the number 27. And Gore is out, so I think you are right. Yeah, yeah uh, so Matthew Gunderson that was involved in that, his teammate. That's right. He is currently sitting in 10th. Now, he has yet to take his stop. So this top 10 is a little bit of uh, not completely accurate of what his pace is will probably show once he's come in and gotten his fuel. In fact, we're still waiting on the top 11 cars out there to come in for stops. They don't want to give up a position right now. They're going to try to stretch that as long as possible, it looks like. Battle for seventh going on. We're on board with Owen McLaughlin looking at John Labaff. And as that happens, our third place driver takes a stop, Michael Overbay. Now he's probably not close enough to be able to leapfrog the likes of Unger and Padovani. Still, interesting, different strategy from his teammate. We wait for that pit stop to finish up. The Ohio driver out of his stall past the cones and on his way. I'll be interested to see if a couple more of the uh, mid-pack pitters become uh, the front runners coming into the pits. I'll be interested to see if Padovani and Unger uh, would head in. Well, they could potentially, I suppose, cost each other time if they start battling, which seems to be what Unger would like to happen as he continues to put pressure on the number 69 car into the end of the lap. Let's see if they respond to Overbay. After he is now the highest pitter, returning in 11th on the track through the final corner. What are we going to see? Neither going in. And you saw them get through turn 10 there around a slower green car. That was Phil Guillaumin who had a problem. He had a spin all by himself coming out of that. Andrew back here in... Uh, third place now. Having gained some spots from the other drivers ahead of him. Hitting. Still in a battle with Rem Ambrosi. This is a driver who has been fighting amongst the top uh, five, I would say, for much of this race. Carmen and Labaf also take their scheduled stops. Oh, we have a car with a blown engine. Daniel Barnett. In the world did this happen? 
looks like he just downshifted it too quickly in the heel of the boot. Let's see if we can catch it on replay. Yep, this is exactly where it happens. Oh boy. Yeah, like you said, the only way I can think of, unless he had some damage earlier with the engine, the only way that that would really happen is just really aggressive downshifting. Yeah, that sends him into pit lane, sadly. The number 66, probably not going to finish this race. I don't think they can replace the engine in 16 minutes. Now, lead stays within half a second of one another. They're coming around to the pit entry. Jefferson Padovani, still your leader, and both of them are in. This will be interesting to see. This is probably a good call for Padovani. I don't know about David Unger. It's going to be really curious to see if he can jump him here in the pits. He's going to have to have a really good stop, though, or have Padovani make a mistake. And curiously, this isn't the tail end of what these cars can do on fuel because Rem Ambrosi stays out. So does Curlin Andrew. So we have at least a couple cars that will go one more lap. Owen McLaughlin will not be among him. He's coming in from fifth. All right. We've got Padovani out. Oh, and Padovani oh, is out early. very early. Unger with a long stop. It's not a speeding penalty. He was in for about seven seconds more. Maybe tires? I'm not sure. It's possible, or he just took a lot more fuel. So this gives Rem Ambrosi the temporary lead ahead of Curlin Andrew. Padovani is now our highest pitter, critically for Unger. He is out ahead of Overbay, and actually by quite a margin. Yeah, they had a big gap on Overbay originally to begin with, so not surprised to see, even though he had a bit of a longer stop, to see him come out ahead of Overbay. Yeah, looking at the pit stop times, now I do see other drivers with similar times to David Unger. John LaBaff also had a 44.5, uh, a 42.4 for Matthew Miles, which is sort of splitting the difference. A 46.2 for... Uh, Julian Huxley, and this is all cone to cone. Very curious. So hopefully Padovani got enough fuel in that car. Well, looking at his pit stop time, Overbay was the same. Rim Ambrosi comes in from the lead to take a stop. Oh, Andrew's out of fuel. Andrew is coasting. Oh, this boy. is going to be incredibly costly. Yeah, you Pushed can hear it. that motor start to stutter in through the last couple of turns. He's able to coast the way, though. It is downhill, but it, he's still going very, very slow compared to the pit speed limit. Oh, I don't know if he's going to make it. Yeah, at this point, I almost think he just needs to take the toe into his spot. Get the crew. He might. I think that might be a little more downhill than, uh, than it may, might look. Good thing we're not at Road America for this round. <laughs> and he's the last car to pit with 13 minutes left to go. That is everybody in, not quite out yet, as the Texas driver barely makes it to his pit stall. I'm not sure Curl and Andrew is going to have to apply the brakes to get that car stopped. I think he might just, <laughs> just barely edge himself in the box. And he's in. Oh my goodness. So let's go to the battle for fourth. This is Eric Harmon, who's been a little bit anonymous this race, at least until now. But he's got Michael Overbay. He jumped Michael Overbay, if I'm not mistaken, actually. He did, and Harmon, like you said, has had a really quiet race, but he started 12th, so he's had a fantastic run up through the field today. And, and that's exactly what it is, a run up through the field, because I'm looking at the pit stop time. He was actually slower in his stall than Overbay. Wow. So he did this on pure pace out on track. Unreal. So, Eric Harmon may be the dark horse to watch out for this season. 
just outside the podium. That currently belongs to Padovani, who is our leader, about eight seconds ahead of the likes of David Unger, who's trying to chase him down. This will really be telling now. We're wondering if Padovani would make a mistake and drop off the back. Well, I guess it's more a question of can Unger catch him? Is he actually the one to make the mistake and reel him in? Then the final spot on the podium is Rim Ambrosi, another 15 seconds behind uh, Unger. I talked about that uh, Australia slash New Zealand invasion. It has uh, been made good upon here in the final moments of the race. All they have to do is cruise to the finish line. We'll have two of them on the podium. We were just talking about Eric Harmon's great pace he's had through the race. Shouldn't surprise us uh, after it might have just been a poor qualifying for him. He has teammates who've had some great pace in that number 19. Absolutely. There you see the number 617 continuing to pace the likes of Michael Overbay, our current champion just behind him. Oh, John LaBaff has had a problem. This is in the inner loop, and it was all by himself. Oh, yeah, he went really far off track, too. I think he... No, he did not keep it out of the tire barrier. Not at all. He got some big damage on the back of that. Yep, just took too much curb on the first apex, and Labaf finds himself crawling to the, uh, to the pits. So I think this car is done. Don't see it on screen, but the number 911... Unfortunately, out of it. Ooh, yeah, big, big damage. Well, his winning uh, NASCAR truck last night came across the line with quite a bit of damage on it, but I don't know that's going to be the same case for him tonight. Yeah, I think this is a little bit of a different beast, unfortunately. <laughs> And Curlin Andrews in for a second time. What happened here? That is interesting. Oh, he hit the wall. This was in the toe of the boot. We're seeing if we could find it. Oh, we just about got it. Let's, uh, if we go back just a little farther. And oh, yeah. Straight into the tires. It, it didn't look very dramatic. Oh. Well, it was a hard hit. You could see the damage on that left front. It was apparently enough that he decided it was better for him to come into the pits. I do not think he's going to get, be getting back out onto the track. It has been an attrition-filled day of our 26, I guess 25 starters... I believe we only have 19 left, something like that. Yeah, we're getting down there for sure in the numbers. Man, Andrew, that could have been a little bit worse for him. He almost hooked the escape road wall. He was very close to that. That's how far off the track he was. Meanwhile, as we come back to fourth, Harmon continues to respond to Overbay, and it's not by large gaps, but what was about four tenths has now been boosted to nine tenths between fourth and fifth place. This is one of our closest battles that we've got up towards the top. And we did get some information. I'm trying to remember if we actually saw this on screen. Overbay had a spin. And that is why Eric Harmon was able to get by him. That was before the pit stops, of course. So Padovani missed out on the championship in the last round of last season. Currently, he is set to potentially take a win in the opening round of 2019 season two. He's still got eight seconds over David Unger. And that to me answers the question about who had pace uh, or whether 
Padovani was just riding the coattails. I, I think that was legitimate. Yeah, absolutely. You see him out in the lead now. The strategy plays in his favor and that good pit stop over Unger as well. Just enough to put him up here. I may have spoke too soon in that battle for fourth. Overbay has responded and cut it back down to five tenths. He's not going to let him go. Yeah, but he's running out of laps for this. We've only got six and a half minutes left. We've seen some huge runs up through the S's. When you get out of 90, you point your car towards the S's, get up through the backstretch. We've seen some huge runs. I think Overbay's going to need some, some of those here. It's definitely possible for him to catch him, though. It seems like he's struggling in certain parts, especially here where it's critical. You talked about the run up the S's down the backstretch. This is where he wants it. And he is getting a little bit of the slipstream now as he pulls up to the back of Harmon, but he's going to run out of road. He's going to have to be aggressive through the inner loop, and he is. He has closed that gap a bit as they head into the carousel. Oh, he is there. Well, I think Overbay's got the, <laughs> the bit between his teeth now. He takes a look down to the inside. He's a long ways back, and he's chopped off at the apex. Eric Harmon is not going to just pull over and let him through. Yeah, Overbay's got to pace himself a little bit. He, time's running out, but he does still have a couple more laps left for him here. He doesn't want to force the issue too soon. Still riding on the back of Harmon. They've now got William Lee, a lapped car up ahead of them. We've seen this affect the battle for the lead earlier on in the race. William holds off the left. Let's one through, tries to let two through, but it's just yeah. putting the likes of Overbay offline. That's going to hurt him there. Let's see if he can get a big run. He's going to need another big run because this is a much bigger gap than he had even before we were watching him get that run through the S's. It is a big, big gap now. It's 1.1 seconds from Overbay up to Harmon. Now only four and a half minutes left to go. Armin does have the lap car of Christopher Richards ahead of him, but I wouldn't be surprised if that had absolutely no effect at all. In fact, that might even help Harmon get a little bit of a slipstream here on the backstretch. I, I think you're right. Look at this. Let's him through. Now is Richards going to pay the same favor to the likes of Overbay? Not close enough to have to pull over through the inner loop. Could maybe be out of the carousel? No, not quite yet. Well, that's the best part of the whole track to get some of that slipstream, so it's not going to help Overbay at all unless he waits until the next backstretch to catch him. It's a fair point. Richards isn't pulling over quite yet, so he could yet help the likes of Overbay. Oh, and behind them. Oh my goodness, Mark File had a huge bobble. If we could get a replay, this was a fantastic save. Oh, it was indeed. Going through the toe. Coming up on the hill there. Oh, great catch there for File in the 777. We're on the replay now. Watch this on the exit. Got to get the power down with his steep uphill, but he got a little greedy. Woo Didn't even lose too much time. Oh, oh, did Overbay just ran into traffic. Overbay hit the uh, hit uh, Julian Huxley. Oh, man. Huxley was trying to get out of the way of Harmon and actually got touched by Harmon as well. Yeah, there, yeah, that started ahead of Overbay, it looks like. Huxley was, Huxley got hit by Harmon, it looks like. Huxley spins back into traffic. And then got hit by Overbay. There you see it on the replay. Blue flags creating a brave new world for Julian Huxley. Unfortunately, that new world is the pits. Watching it one more time. Yet yeah, tries to pull out. Just a little bit too late. They got by Christopher Richards all right. He wasn't the issue there at all. He was just 
there for the show. And that bumps Mark File into P5. Oh. Now, Harmon's was a light touch. It doesn't seem to be suffering too badly. So I don't know if File will be able to jump up one more. Yeah, Harmon looks like his car is clean. In fact, that didn't even cause too much damage to Julian Huxley's number 322 radical either. Just a little bit of rear end damage. It was when Overbay came through that the real damage ensued. So now we get to have a little bit of fun because I looked at the clock and then I looked at our leader and Padovani crossed at about 138 left. Now they've been doing 141, 142 laps. So we think this might be the white flag, but sometimes iRacing can be a little screwy on us. What a fantastic run by the number 69 car, the BO Racing driver. Again, just fell short of the championship last season. Wrecked out at Brands Hatch. Comes to another very fast track with lots of sweeping corners and old school barriers with him close to the edges of the circuit. And today, he thrives. He kept Unger within sight. Had to repass him a few times. And then eventually when the pit stops ha happened, that uh, Alpine Stars geodesic car took to the lead by eight seconds and never looked back. 15 seconds to go. What are we going to see here? Is this going to be the checkered flag this time by? I think it is. White flag is out, which means next one going to be the checkers. Or is it? No, we did not get the checkers. One more lap. All right. Oh, I wondered. Padovani's got 3.3 .3 miles more. <laughs> now, who put it? That's the big question. File is really catching Overbay right now. Well, File was ahead of Overbay. What happened here? When did they swap spots? That's a good point. Oh, <laughs> it, it, File spun in the chutes. And he handed oh, it over. Oh, he is. That's got to be disappointing. This has put together a nice little battle then. File to the inside of the damaged Overbay. And I bet uh, that uh, Overbay wished that it was one lap shorter. As he maybe could have defended that position. But now all File has to do is streak away. Oh, well, but he goes really wide in 90. He was down on the inside in the front stretch. That's going to allow Overbay to get a big run here, but how much is that damage going to hurt him? He's going to stay with him, but he's going to be slow in a straight line. Can he outbreak him into the inner loop? He's going to try for it. Oh. He just can't quite pull it off. And we'll have to pull away from this great battle because two corners to go for the Brazilian. Jefferson Padovani, three wins last season. Tied his teammate on number of wins. He kicks it off with a P1 out of the final quarter. The number 69 car is gonna take victory today at Watkins Glen. Unger should not be ashamed of this second place, but he certainly has something to think about to try and defeat Jefferson when he comes back in a week's time. And then how about Rem Ambrosi, starting in sixth place all the way up to the podium. And behind them, Eric Harmon, he's going to sail away from Mark File. Yep, going to be a fourth place finish for the number 617, considering he started 12th. <laughs> Wonderful run for the 617. Not a bad run for Mark File either. I'm sure it's not the position he wanted after the incident there at the end but started seventh he fought his way up a couple of spots he gets a, he snags a top five tonight as well over bay comes home six mclaughlin with a seventh most of these battles are separated from here on out we have only 14 cars left on the lead lap in this final lap of the race that was miles finishing his out Matthew Gunderson,
trails home after contact with the car behind him. Danny Duchesne earlier on in the race. Duchesne's close to the car behind him, but that is not for position. Brian Matthews finishes a lap down. Gilman, Hebert, Lee, excuse me, actually, nope, that was it. Uh, Duchesne was the last car in the lead lap. I was overestimated. It was only 10 cars finishing with the leader. So we're going to take a quick break here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. We'll come back with the unofficial results as well as driver interviews. If you stick around on screen, you'll see all the upcoming races here on GSRC. Hello from Dream Vacations. We look forward to helping you plan a cruise vacation where you can race your friends on the top deck while cruising the oceans. Or you can compete with your friends in style with virtual reality racing on board. If cruising is not for you, we can send you to Germany where you can challenge the ring or whisk you off to Abu Dhabi to take on the world's fastest roller coaster in Ferrari world. Whatever your dream vacation may be, let Dream Vacations handle the details and make that dream into reality. Visit us at www.travelwithanangel.com. Glenn, we just watched round one of 2019's season two and the PRL Radical Racing Series and Jefferson Padovani, after coming in as a bridesmaid last season, has kicked things off with a win. The number 69 car beats the likes of David Unger to the line by six and some seconds with Rim Ambrosi coming home on the last spot on the podium. Eric Harmon, though, uh, one of the drives of the race, going from 12th to 4th for him, ahead of the likes of Mark File, almost threw away his top five finish on uh, with one lap left to go. Michael Overbay did throw away a little bit of a better finish for himself, but I wouldn't really blame him for uh, what happened. A lap car spun in front of him, could not avoid it. He had to settle for six with a damaged car limping home. Owen McLaughlin behind him in seventh with Matthew Miles finishing in eighth. Then it's Matthew Gunderson. This is a nice climb from 15th to 9th. Uh, Danny Duchesne rounds out the top 10 and one of the best finishes I think we've seen for Duchesne in this series. Behind them, those are all the lead lap cars. Behind them, three cars finished one lap down. That's Ronald McManus, 
uh, Phil Guillaume and David Haber, who also had a spin off camera on the last lap for him, but he didn't lose anything because behind them you'd have to go three laps down to William Lee, who finishes 14th, four laps down to Julian Huxley, six laps down, and 16th is going to be Brian Matthews. John Labaff, not the success that he had last night in the PRL Truck Series at Martinsville, getting the win there. He's going to have to settle with a 17th tonight in the Radical Series. Curlin Andrew, who we saw have some incidents after a strong run up front, he's going to find himself back in 18th. Tyler Gore finishing 19th, Christopher Richards in 20th. And 21st, it was Daniel Barnett, and this gets into the DNFs today. Eric Luke, 22nd, Andrew Spicer, 23rd. Christian Gritzko uh, had a couple uh, decent saves and then a couple not saves, unfortunately. Spice starting third, he'll finish 24th. Brad Yeager, 25th. And then we have did not start from Bartos uh, Roskovics and Mark Nadeau. Up uh, next, we have our winner ready to talk to us. Glitter Pants kicks it off with a win. <laughs> Jefferson Padovani, we were talking about how you, you lost out on the championship, but it seems like you've already rebounded here today. Yeah, yeah, Joe. Good night. Good night, everyone. I think there's no way to start better a uh, uh, season. And, and well, best lap, uh, pole position, and winning this race. I didn't expect because I didn't have time to practice uh, for this uh, for this for this race. Have a lot of issues on 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 work. Uh, but well, uh, in, in the end, uh, Michael uh, made a very nice car for us. And well, that, that was a very nice race, good race. Uh, David put a, a lot of pressure. He certainly did. We enjoyed the battle you and he had, but how much of that was actual racing and how much of it was just uh, using the draft to swap back and forth early on? It, it seemed like there was a little bit of that, but then it, it, it looked like it got kind of serious in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the beginning, uh, we were, we, both of us were re really pushing, uh, both of us. And then I realized that the fuel could be uh, shorter. So I decided to let him go on like lap six or seven and save a little bit of fuel because uh, I realized that the only way that we could uh, uh, get some distance from uh, from each other is opening a gap more than two seconds. Uh, less than two seconds on Watkins Glen, you, you can uh, leave the guy behind. Uh, so uh, that was my, my strategy. Uh, I let him pass in some part uh, of the beginning of the race and uh, save some fuel behind him. And then, uh, and then I was able to pass him before uh, get, getting on the pits. I didn't want to uh, be behind him because uh, it, it, it's dangerous. You, you can see, I think, in, in, the, in the broadcast that he almost touched me. And, but he had some issues uh, during the, his pit stop. I, I don't know what happened, but uh, I opened the gap more than I, that I was expecting. I, I was trying to open uh, like three seconds, but I opened seven. So that was enough to 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 uh, make to the end of the race but uh, on the beginning we were we both of us were really pushing it's easy to forget with all that action that you actually started on pole for this race uh i take it that uh, there will be no more coming from behind in, in this season and trying to climb through the field <laughs> Yes. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I still don't know <laughs> because uh, now I have a very nice possibility to uh, yes, uh, David Unger and Michael, my my uh, my teammate. That they are both really uh, uh, quick guys, fast guys. Eric and uh, and Mark, uh, both them are too. So uh, I don't know, Joe. <laughs> I need to just to, to wait a little bit more to see how how the how this uh, championship goes. Uh, I, I, I confess for you, it's more funny to start from the back, but starting from the back reduces a lot the possibility of uh, of uh, of winning the the championship. Uh, even more because of the, the the guys that are racing here now, they are really quick. They certainly are. Uh, we've watched David make you uh, give you a run for your money, but congratulations on the win today and can't wait to see you next week. Thank you, Joe. Thank you a lot. That was our winner, Jefferson Padavani, and we have second place, Dave Unger, who was challenging, ready to talk to Nick Schmeg.
We do indeed. I've caught up with Dave Unger, who finished second place. The great night for left side drive racing uh, with his teammate Eric Harming finishing in fourth as well. So, David, that was uh, an attrition-filled race, but you're able to slip through all of the uh, the carnage and get a second place. Okay, can you hear me, guys? Ah, uh, yeah, what a great race. We saw you uh, finish uh, second there, get through all the the accidents and all of the trouble that was all around the track. Only 10 cars finishing on the lead lap, but you kept it really clean yourself. You only had one incident point the whole night. Uh, did you find it really hard to, to control this car tonight at this track? Uh, no, not at all. I've driven this car for a long, long time, and that one incident came on the very last lap, unfortunately. It's always fascinating for me to watch the uh, the the team championships. Uh, I was we were wondering the iRacing official series with the Radicals is a fixed setup. Do the teams really really put a lot of work into improving those setups, or does is everyone really kind of balanced out throughout the whole field? I think so. Yeah. Um, obviously, you get a few people who don't like the fixed setups, uh, but um, I don't mind them at all, uh, and it does help to make a more even field. Absolutely. Well, you had a great night tonight. Your team did as well. Uh, should we expect going into Road Atlanta next week, uh, you're going to have another great race like you did you and uh, Harmon tonight? Uh, well, you know what they say, one race at a time. Um, I'm hoping to do well. It's not one of my favorite tracks. Uh, but, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Hopefully we can catch up with you again later if see some more success down the road for you or your teammate uh, or anyone involved. So congratulations tonight. Go celebrate your podium finish, and hopefully we'll be able to talk to you again soon. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. That was second place David Unger, and we have our final podium sitter, Rem Ambrosi, ready to talk to us. Rem, uh, your first time running in this series, I believe, and a podium is not a bad showing. It's not at that. Uh, I was with PRL a long time ago, but uh, I've rejoined, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a great, great, uh, great thing to to be on the podium, definitely. Yeah, managed to get the number 63 car up from six on the grid to third. You saw a number of cars, a number of drivers seem to have trouble in front of you. Do you tend to try and just uh, bring the car home or do you push it 100% all the way? Oh, no, look, I, I, I watch the time as it's going down and I look, you know, how far the person is behind me. Uh, and I just take it from there. In the last, let's say, 10 minutes of the race, I was just taking it a little bit easier. The tyres are a little bit iffy, so, you know, you just have to be careful around some of those corners. Uh, we talked to David uh, about next week being Road Atlanta. You talk about a twitchy car not being at home at certain circuits. Are you looking forward to that one, or are you nervous? Uh, look, Road Atlanta's got its own problems. Uh, you know, you sort of got to deal with it as you go. Uh, <laughs> if you sort of become nervous, uh, as you know, as a driver, you're just not going to make it around it. That's very true. Well, uh, congratulations on managing to get to the podium today, and we hope to see you next week. Thank you, Joe. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much, everyone. That was Rem Ambrosi, our third place finisher here today. We're going to close up and we want to thank a few people. Once again, uh, thanks to Dream Vacations for sponsoring this season. You can find them at travelwithanangel.com if you want to check them out. Also, a thank you goes out to iRacing for bringing us back on IESN this season. All you got to do is to subscribe is pick, click, if I could speak today, click the big red button that says subscribe. Thanks to the companies that provide the software and hardware for our broadcast listed here on your screen. And additional thanks to June Lalonde, who provides our wonderful music. See this screen for how to get a hold of more of her great work. Thanks to the team today, Nick, Sean, and Dougie. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races, you can find it at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. You can also check us out on social media. We're on Twitter at GSRC. Our channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. 
next race going down to road atlanta that'll be thursday march 28th at 9 p.m eastern we also have upcoming races for other series listed on the screen so check those out and mark them down on your calendar but until next time race clean race hard we'll see you on the track